I've spent every day on that beach for the last couple of years. I, I'm a runner, and um, I've seen that beach change radically. Just starting in um, May of last year, it completely disappeared where I stopped running. Um, I stopped running completely. And I remember I used to leave my shoes right in front of Keikaha Park, and I would run barefoot all the way down the beach because there was that big swath of sand right in front of the revetment. And slowly, as, as the years went by, my shoes would move further and further down the sand um, until now I have to drive. <laughs> now I have to drive all the way to where I want to start running. I saw you in my dreams We were walking hand in hand On a white sandy beach of Hawaii We were playing in the sun we were having so much The story of sand begins on Kauai's Mana coastal plain. The flat, wing-shaped relief has been built up for millions of years by wind-driven high surf. The sand and the sediments have been pushed around the end of the island for 17 to 20 miles by wave-generated longshore currents. But something odd started to happen in 2011 and we wanted to know what's happening to our beaches. Aloha Kako! My name is Dennis Rowley and I've got one of the best jobs on the planet. I work in the environmental shop here at the Pacific Missile Range and I'm responsible in part for the natural and cultural resources on this base. Late last summer I noticed that uh, although our beaches typically accrete and erode in a seasonal uh, fashion, we were seeing sand beaches where they'd never been before. Out along our northern beaches we have a limestone bench that fairly well defines the beach, and typically the, it's wet on the, uh, the outside of that bench. Last summer, we started seeing sand accretion that was remarkable. Came in to the extent that some of the uh, northern uh, beaches uh, now expanded out past the limestone bench, and we had beaches, beach areas where our uh, wildlife services people could walk where there were no beaches before, at least in the last 10 years. Seeing that coupled with what was going on at the south end of the uh, base, where the Kakaha beaches were eroding to the point where they were practically non-existent, it uh, sort of had me scratching my head. Aloha, I'm uh, Dr. Steve Taylor with Kauai Community College. Dennis Rowley contacted the college and said, hey, we got something going on here. Uh, and, and you have some people there uh, who would want to help us figure out what's going on or want to study something. Right, so when Mr. Taylor called me, I was really excited. Yeah, the changes in the beach have been radical. From when I started running down the beach, we saw the ironwoods that have been there, I don't know, I'd say for 20 years, but they just completely fell in the water, and um, I, I pretty much thought that there was no hope that the beach was ever gonna come back. And I went first to Dr. Uh, Stephen Taylor, and secondly to Dr. Chuck Blay, who uh, is a noted geologist here on the island. I've been investigating the sedimentological aspects of the shoreline of Kauai for some time. So I'm pretty familiar with problems of things such as uh, beach erosion, shoreline changes along the west side of the, of the island, the Manaa Coastal Plain. So all of this really piqued my interest and I immediately thought that we, we could probably do a very interesting investigation here, do a survey or document more accurately exactly what are the changes that occur throughout, say, a period of months or years. Once a month, we uh, all gather and we uh, go to three clearly marked uh, positions on the beach and survey them. The second major part of our study was to start measuring the beaches. And basically by measuring the beaches, I mean constructing what we refer to as a profile across the beach, which is very simply done by measuring the width of the beach with a tape measure and measuring variations in the elevation across the beach with a leveling device. We use a transit with a level uh, site and a stadia rod spread out, uh, spread out across the beach at different locations. And with that, we can construct a two-dimensional cross-section of the beach, basically showing its width and variations in this elevation from one part to the other. I was surprised at how quickly everything changed. Um, I definitely anticipated that the beach would come back to Keikaha. 
um, but I didn't anticipate that it was going to be back so quickly. What are the general things that cause a beach to move, say? So that's part of the investigation. The other is, uh, how much is the beach actually moving? Where is it moving, and, and how much, and in what time frame? Every month we go back to exactly the same spot. We make exactly the same profile in the same direction to see if the beach has increased its width or decreased its width. Our study is really basically anchored in the model that we've created for the beaches on Kauai. That model explains the interaction between the major ocean waves that approach our island from many different directions throughout the year and the changes in the, in the beaches. The waves generate currents which move sand along the shoreline, perhaps either even eroding some beaches at times, but depositing sand on other beaches to make them wider. Breaking surf hits the beach at an angle, causing currents of water to flow parallel to the shoreline. Everything is suspended or it's floating in the water, is carried down current, and is deposited onto the beach. Just like there are rules for how you handle evidence in, say, uh, a courtroom setting. The shorter answer is you really carefully document what you're doing, and you yourself try to come up with ways that you could be wrong, which is sort of at the heart of science, is, is uh, you, you want to uh, be tentative and, and take your, your um, your ideas is not as, as, as ground truth that you try to build up support for, but that you constantly test uh, to, to make sure you're doing things the right way. When we set this study up, we wanted to collect data systematically in the same way every time. That removes any kind of objectivity or guessing. Uh, we want to record data precisely and in the same manner every time. So we'll fill out an entire table of data on one of our data sheets and that becomes our data set at that one location every month. So far we've, we've collected five full months of data. These happen to be months in Hawaii that we refer to as the winter month where we really see the big North Shore swells coming in from the North Pacific storms and those are the waves that generate the, the strong longshore currents that will move sand for over 25 miles all the way around the west side of the island all the way from the Hyena Reefs all the way around to Kekaha Beach. So when I started doing the survey, I remember hearing from Chuck that it was, oh, it was a seasonal swell, and it was the North, the North Shore wrapping around and bringing it, and I thought, what is this guy talking about? I, don't, I, I didn't really believe it, because it seems crazy that the North Shore waves would have that much energy to wrap around and bring sand all the way to Kekaha. Because I know how, when I drive there, I know how long it takes me. That's a lot of energy and a lot of gas. So it would be a lot of energy to move that much sand all the way around the coast. Each month we measured six locations, three on the Pacific Missile Range and also three at public beaches. The Mana Drag Strip, MacArthur Park in Keikaha, and in front of St. Teresa School. We saw dramatic changes in the beaches in December at Major's Day. Because most of the sand is moving from the, uh, the north and the west in an eastward direction, in other words, from PMRF area towards Keikaha, we noticed a dramatic change in the beach at Majors Bay. Yeah, three, that was like within one month, I think it got 300 feet shorter. Beginning at about the middle of December, when we started getting really big waves coming in from the north shore and driving currents down around the west side, that beach went from around 600 feet in width to less than 300 feet. So, like, what happened to the sand? Whenever I'm faced with a question like that, I always try to look to the science. At the same time, the beach at MacArthur Park near Kekaha increased its width by over 60 meters or more than about 200 feet in the same cycle. These changes were not unexpected based upon the model that we've developed for beaches here. But what was a little bit unexpected was the magnitude of the change. Our beaches are environmentally, ecologically, economically, and culturally essential to Kauai. While this survey is important in understanding the seasonal beach changes along the Manaa coastal plain, how else will our data be useful? 
primarily that's what it's used for is coastal planning. You have a road there, is that road going to, you know, is there a trend happening, is that road going to disappear? Should we move it inland? At what cost? Should we try to armor it? At what cost? Uh, so those kinds of decisions uh, need to be made and, they, and the, the data that we're collecting can help people make those kinds of decisions. And that's a, a large part of the role of science is to get good, solid information so that the public uh, or, or the leaders that the public elects can, can make those kinds of decisions. As long as we get the support of KCC and Dr. Blay, we'll continue as long as, uh, as we can. So, am I committed to this study? Absolutely. I love seeing the changes and, and documenting it and really nailing this down. So I'm committed for at least another two or three years, if not longer. So did we uncover what's going on with our beaches? Well, our questions and our survey will continue, but based on our model so far, we did see that the winter longshore currents actually did drive the sand from the north shore around to the west side beaches. But stay tuned for our summer report and join us for the next episode of The Story of Sand as we continue to survey the Manar Coastal Plain to continue a deeper investigation of the sands on the edge of Kauai. I saw you in my dreams We were walking hand in hand On a white sandy beach of Hawaii We were playing in the sun We were having so much fun On a white sandy beach of Hawaii Sound of the ocean Soothe my restless soul Sound of the ocean Rock me all night long Those hot long summer days Lying there in the sun on a white sandy beach. Because I think this is exciting research to be a part of this. I'd like to be a part of it to the end. Mm -hmm.